Hello. Today I'm going to demonstrate the difference between a ferromagnetic material and a paramagnetic material. And I'm going to use as my example for the ferromagnetic material this permanent magnet. It's actually a series of six permanent magnets aligned together. And the blue side is the north seeking pole and the yellow side is the south seeking pole. And I have another one here. Also blue is north seeking. Now, um, in a permanent magnet, a ferromagnet, the spins of the electrons, the unpaired electrons, are all pointing in the same direction, all right, along the axis of the uh, magnet. And because of that, um, if we put north to north, you can see there's a repulsion. And if we put north to south, there's an attraction. And we can do that on either side. I can put south to south and get an attraction, a repulsion, Oops. and north to north and get a repulsion. You get the idea. You can even kind of feel they don't want to align this way, but they do want to align that way. Now you've all seen this before. It's very common. But now I'm going to talk about paramagnetism. How does paramagnetism differ from ferromagnetism? How does a... First of all, if you put a compass next to a paramagnetic material, it would not be attract. Uh, it would not align the uh, the compass needle. Whereas uh, you get an alignment with uh, a permanent magnet. In a paramagnetic material, um, by the way, this is manganese chloride (MnCl2) dissolved in water. It's a saturated solution, close to saturated. Each manganese ion has five unpaired electrons. So it has a lot of electrons, unpaired electrons in the sample. But they're aligned in all different directions so that there's no net magnetic field emanating from this material. But you can partially align these electrons by putting it in an external field. I'm not able to do this with a weak magnet like this. But if I use a stronger magnet, and this, this is a... Um, a strong magnet that I got from Educational Innovations. Um, I've marked the North Seeking Pole and the South Seeking Pole on it. And the, the spins are all aligned along the axis. Now you can see, you will see in a second, that if I put the North Seeking side here near the paramagnetic material, it's attracted. The paramagnetic is attracted to the North Seeking. Now let's do it with the, the South Seeking pole of the magnet, and you will see that it's also attracted to the south-seeking pole. And I could do this on either side, it doesn't matter. If I put this over here, I get an attraction to the south-seeking pole, and then if I put the north-seeking pole here, I've got to wait till it stops spinning, but you can see I get an attraction to the north-seeking pole. So in paramagnetism, you have unpaired electrons. Like if you had something like sodium chloride, there's no unpaired electrons. It's, it's not paramagnetic. It's not ferromagnetic. But in a material where there's unpaired electrons, usually in the metal ion, um, the electrons are unaligned in the absence of a field. But then when you put it in a magnetic field, you get a partial alignment, not a total alignment, but a partial alignment of the, of the spins. And that causes the, 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 the aligned spins to be attracted to, a, to that external field. It's a weak attraction, much weaker than a permanent magnet, because you only have partial alignment. Remember, the spins pointing in the direction of the field are attracted. Those pointing in the opposite direction are repelled. But there's more pointing in the direction of the field than in the opposite direction. So you get a weak attraction to a magnetic field. But it's something that you can actually observe using a fairly strong magnet. And again, I got this particular magnet from uh, Educational Innovation. So this is a permanent magnet, and it attracts the paramagnet. So I hope this increases your understanding of the difference between a paramagnetic material and a ferromagnetic material. Uh, thank you for your attention, and I'll see you next time.